that mankind can come back, can learn righteousness and come back into a relationship with God. Isaiah 35, 9 and 10, it says, But only the redeemed of the Lord will walk there, and the ransomed of the Lord, all of those that are in the grave, will return. They will enter Zion with singing. Everlasting joy will crown their heads. Gladness and joy will overtake them. And sorrow and sighing will flee away. They'll be but a memory. This is the truth. This is what the scriptures have to say about his glorious kingdom. Those who fail to make progress will fall under what is described in 2 Thessalonians 1.9. And this is really a necessary purging process so those that refuse to come back into a relationship with God will be purged from the scene. It says, Who will be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. Revelation 21.4 A period follows this. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Do you believe these things? Do you believe the truth? 1 Corinthians 2 9. I hath not seen nor ear heard, neither hath entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. Another joyful, joyful uh, promise. It's going to be beyond anyone's expectation. A plan so complete and thorough, it's beyond our comprehension. And as the saying goes, still there's more to follow. It's beyond what anyone could expect or believe. But our God has, des has described it as a joy to give them everlasting life. So the question we might ask after we've looked at this, all of these things is, do you have the truth? But perhaps the question we should be asking is, does the truth have you? It's not enough to have the truth up here. Does the truth have you? In Luke chapter 8, we're given a parable that kind of describes what should be happening. And it says, he spake a parable. A sower went out to sow his seeds. And as he sowed, some fell by the wayside and was trodden down. And the fowls of the air devoured it. And some fell upon the rock. And as soon as it was sprung up, it withered away because it lacked moisture. And some fell among thorns. And the thorns sprung up and choked it. And other fell on good ground and sprang up and bare fruit an hundredfold. And when he had said these things, he cried, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. And his disciple asked him, saying, What might this parable be? They didn't understand what he was saying. So he went on to explain. And he said unto them, Unto you is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God but unto others in parables that seeing they might not see and hearing they might not understand. But that on the good ground are they that which in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep it and bring forth fruit with patience. So what's the difference between having the truth and the truth having you? It's fruitage. Fruitage is required. That's really how we know that the individuals have been enlivened and enlightened and received the Holy Spirit because we see fruitage. That's what's commanded. What's the impact of truth on our life? Well, we should go from being a diamond in the rough to a diamond of pure character. Really what's described as a crystallized character. The truth is only partially about having knowledge. Not that we can have the truth in ignorance. We're not saying that. But the real effect is its transforming effect on our lives. 
the truth is not so much about filling up a vessel as it is about emptying one's vessel in sacrifice to others. The truth is not so much about lighting a fire as it is about sustaining a lifelong blaze. The truth is not so much about building an intellect as about acting with wisdom. The truth is not so much about feelings as it is about developing a heart condition. The truth is not so much about filling a mind as it is transforming a character. What's the impact of the truth on each and every one of us? The truth must be a fire in our hearts. If we live the truth, we don't have the truth. The truth has us. When our lives become living epistles, then we have evidence that the truth has us. What is the effect of truth? It's a consecrated life dedicated to the Lord, providing fruitage. Yes, we continue to prove all things and to hold fast that which is good. This is the will of God. 1 Thessalonians 4, three, For this is the will of God concerning you, even your sanctification. And sanctification means to be made holy. And being made holy requires knowledge, it requires the actuating power of the Holy Spirit, and it requires that we struggle with the daily struggles of life. And if we're faithful unto death, we're promised will receive a crown of life. God has a plan, and you are in it. God has a plan, and everyone is in it. And that's the beautiful part of the truth. So let us not keep our lights under a bushel. Let's go out and tell others and profess these Bible truths. The word of our God is powerful, it is sure, and it is true. Let us go forth with assurance and let everyone that we know know that God has a plan and they are a part of it. Our God is a wonderful and glorious God and we rejoice in his character and his love for everyone. For from him and through him and to him are all things. To God be the glory forever. Amen.